Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the City of Gloucester Zoning Board of Appeals hearings of September 12, 2024, here at Cairo's Auditorium. This meeting is being conducted as a hybrid, which means we are in person and we are also allowing people to participate on Zoom. For the record, the Zoom ID is 828-4217-2922. I recognize in attendance of the board, myself, Joe Parisi, Catherine Schlichty, uh, uh, Michael Nyman, Peter Canavo, and Ronald Wilson. And I declare we have a quorum. Our first order of business is the approval of minutes from August 15th and August 29th, 2024, which everyone received and were posted in the drive. I'll entertain a motion on both. Motion to approve minutes as written for 815 and 829. Second. Motion made and seconded on the minutes. Roll call vote. Ms. Lichty? Yes. Mr. Nyman? Yes. Mr. Canavo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Parisi? Yes. Our first order of business is I will entertain a motion to for the board to go into executive session to discuss pending litigation and upcoming mediation scheduled for September 18th. Um, Need a motion for that, yeah. Joe. Uh, make a motion that we go into executive session. Second. Made and seconded. Roll call vote. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Canavo? Yes. Ms. Schlichty? Yes. Mr. Nyman? Yes. Mr. Preece? Yes. So we will be going into executive session. This won't be a long process, so appreciate everyone bearing with us. Members, we're going to adjourn to this antechamber here. Okay, we are back. Our first action and new business is a request for an extension of a variance to 20 Main Street LLC. This uh, was granted and they're asking for a six month extension to May 13th, 2024. Attorney Ellison, did you wanna say anything? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Deborah Ellison, Ellison Law Office, 63 Middle Street, Gloucester. The owner of this building is 20 Main LLC. And as you stated, they're requesting a six month extension of the variances that were granted in January of 2023. You may recall this is a 24 residential unit mixed use multifamily project at 20 Main Street. The variances were granted for front, rear and side yard setbacks and vegetative cover. And the ZBA was the first step in the permitting process. Your grant of the variances was appealed, and that appeal was not dismissed until November 13th, 2023. In April of 24, the applicant filed its permit application with the city council, and that's where it is still pending. We're currently before the planning board for a recommendation to the city council, and it has been referred to third party review. We expect to have a presentation on the third party review in October of 2024. And there's nothing in the third party review that gives us concern. We expect that all of the comments will be resolved. Hopefully after the October 3rd meeting, we will be able to move to the city's planning and development committee and then on to the city council. At best, we're looking for um, at a decision in November, 2024. And that, of course, can also be appealed. Without the required permits, the applicant's hands are tied. We cannot begin any of the work on the project. And the applicant would like to preserve the relief that was granted by this board by expending, extending the variance deadline to May 13th, 2024. I would suggest that the appeal and the lengthy process before 2025, excuse me, thank you. Um, the lengthy process before the city council constitutes good cause to support the extension. I'm happy to answer any questions. No questions. I thank you for coming forward early. We don't always get that luxury. People like to come in after it expires. I'll entertain a motion to grant an extension to May 13th, 2025 for 20 Main Street. Yeah, I can make that motion to grant an extension to uh, May 13th. Is that correct? 
2025 for uh, 20 Main Street. Second. Made and seconded. We'll have a roll call vote on extension of the variance. Mr. Canarvo? Yes. Mr. Schlichty? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Nyman? Yes. Mr. Parisi? Yes. Just a, I just have a quick question, uh, just a reminder. So if for some reason that that's still problematic in May, can you get another extension or not? I just can't quite remember the variances. My understanding is that we can, but they can only be for six months. Uh, it can only be six months at a time, and nowhere in the ordinance does it say it is limited to one. Yeah, so it could be unlimited. Thank you. Okay, our first new application of the evening is the petition of Isabel Thomas seeking variance under 1.7 and 3.2.1 for front and side yard setbacks and lot coverage to construct an addition at 44 Leonard Street, represented by Attorney Frontiero. Ms. Thomas could not be here tonight due to a death in the family. Uh, I'd like to start with a little bit of history here. On November 9th, 2023, this board recalls that uh, we came here to get to undo our lot line reconfiguration that was done in the 90s. Um, and this, that, was, that relief was granted by this board, which made this lot larger. Um, the petitioner, whose 93-year-old mother lives next door at the adjacent 17 Walnut Street was also involved in that. We filed two petitions to reconfigure the lot lines. Uh, as part of that process, the garage was moved, not physically moved, but moved from one lot to the other by, by reason of the reconfiguration. Uh, the main reason they did this is because they eventually may want to sell the mother's house at 17 Walnut right next door. She's getting obviously up in age and her daughter wants to be able to take care of her and her house that she lives in now at, uh, at 44 Leonard. So that's the reason for this. And both, uh, and again, both uh, decisions are, are included in the filing, the 2023 one and the previous one. As to the current petition, uh, in furtherance of the care of her mother, again, she's seeking to do this. It's a modest 354 square foot single story addition uh, added to a single story modest size house. Um, and as the lot was created through relief from this board, I don't believe that the, um, spe the special permit to alter and expand applies for, with the single and two family uh, protections. So I think we do need to either get new variances or modify variances. Variances do not confer um, special status to the property as far as being non-conforming. So that's why we can't do this by special permit to alter and expand. Um, the lot was created again through in 2023, and today we're seeking a variance for lot coverage and to, to amend actually two existing variances, uh, one involving a linear, uh, more linear feet of encroachment, but getting no closer. That's the front yard uh, on Rogers Lane. It's five feet away. It'll continue to be five feet away, but more linear feet of five foot encroachment. And on the side yard setback variance, we are getting closer. Um, so we're asking, we're asking for a modification of both of those variances. Uh, the site's located in Anasquam in the R20 district. It's a corner lot. Um, and the superseding setbacks apply, uh, the R10 superseding setbacks. There was some question about that because part of Leonard Street's included part isn't, but we resolved that question with uh, the former building commissioner, uh, Don Bellinger, um, last time we were here in 2023. So the R10 setbacks do apply. So it's one lot totaling 9,026 square feet, as opposed to the 4,898 square feet that existed before. Um, it's again, a modest sized building. Um, and it's worthy of note that if it wasn't reconfigured, we'd still be asking for relief, but just different relief. We would be asking for rear yard setback relief instead of side yard setback relief, because the lot was reconfigured to give it less side yard setback um, and more rear yard setback. Um, so either way, we'd be in here seeking relief, regardless of whether this uh, this this reconfiguration was done. All right. So um, as to the lot coverage, I won't go over the uh, standard under Section 1.7.2. I'll just uh, talk about each prong. As far as the first prong, uh, complying with the lot coverage requirement would involve a hardship and that petition would be forced to add a second floor. That would defeat the whole purpose of this petition. The petition is to give her mother a single story living, add a little bit of room for that. So in order to avoid a lot coverage um, variance, they have to put a second floor on, which we wouldn't be here if that was the case. So um, I think that's a hardship that qualifies under the statute. Uh, and also, it would be impossible to buy land from anybody else. Uh, it's, it's, it's a corner lot with streets on two sides. 
As to the second prong, uh, this, this issue does not affect the area in general. Uh, most of the lots in the area are much larger, and most lots in the area are not corner lots. So I think it is something that is not common in general to the zoning district. And as to the third prong, uh, the relief can be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent of the zoning ordinance. Again, the, uh, the request itself is, is modest on the, um, on the lot coverage. We're asking for 3.8% more. It was barely under last time, so we're asking for a 4% variance. Um, and one of the purposes of the zoning ordinance is to you know, enhance the quality of life of our inhabitants. And this would certainly make it easier for families to stay together and give her, the petitioner's mother a place to live independently and longer uh, on her own. So I think it does satisfy the quality of life element of the purpose of the zoning ordinance. Also, the disturbance to the neighborhood would be very, very minimal. Uh, the only neighboring lot that touches this belongs to the petitioner's mother. Uh, again, there's streets otherwise. As to the modification of the other two variances, um, according to 1.7.4, existing variances may be modified by this board, provided the interests of the neighborhood and the city are not impaired, but only after notice and good cause shown. So again, we're here we're seeking to modify the uh, Rogers Lane um, variance just by, we're not changing the variance granted, which was 15 feet. We're just asking again for more linear feet of that. Uh, so and as far as the um, side yard, we are actually going closer encroachment wise, again, towards the mother's lot. Uh, and that would be going from four feet away to 1.8 feet away. So that would require a modification of the variance from six feet to 8.2 feet. Uh, I think the petitioner has shown above what I, I talked about that there is good cause shown for this relief, uh, the needs of her mother, the needs of enhancing the quality of life of families. Uh, again, it's very, very small to begin with. The, it's only a 354 foot addition, very, very modest. Uh, we're unaware of any detrimental effects to the neighborhood of the city or its inhabitants. So I would submit that neither the interests of the neighborhood nor the city are impaired by allowing the relief requested. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions at this point? Um, I have a question, just my own edification. Um, so the, before you came and we granted the lot line change, yep. the house what? The house was non-conforming in, it, in its frontage and- Yes. But so by virtue of granting a lot line change, the existing structure lost its legally non-conforming status? That's what our ordinance says. And you know, it's, I think it's questionable whether that's ever been addressed by a court, but I just comply with what our ordinance says that you can't reconfigure lot lines without complying with the provisions of the zoning ordinance. So I thought it better to be a, err on the side of caution. I think we asked for like six or eight variances. Because in order for us to grant the lot line change, we had to grant all these. Yes, things. you got it. Okay. it. Before I could go to the planning board for the form A. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Did they consider other arrangements of, there's a lot of space in the middle of the lot. Uh, they, they really, I mean, they did this configuration work the best uh, for what they wanted. The, the left side of the house, they kind of wanted to extend for the mother to have her own little suite. So this made the most sense as what to do. So they really, they didn't really consider that or I'm not aware that they considered that. Okay, we're gonna take public testimony. I'll remind everybody if you're participating in Zoom, you'll hit your raise hand device and we will recognize you and bring you in. If you're in the hall, please come right up to the microphone. We need your name and address for the record first and then you can Testify. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application? Raise your hand or come forward. Anyone in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Any opposition? Seeing none, there's no need for rebuttal. Discussion by the board. Pretty straightforward. I don't have a problem with that. Pretty minor variance, yeah. Um, in essence, you're really taking off the back side of the house, really, and these we can tying it in. Right. So it's not you're blowing out all these walls and yes. making it a little bit. Yes. Not really adding much as far as rooms, just expanding the space. I, ha I have the same uh, 
thought as as you did, Ron, about well, why couldn't you go out, you know, make it an L shape? But um, I don't know if that's any better because this is actually coming close to the lot line, but there's no there's open space around it in the lot next door. As opposed, to if you go down the backside, you're going to be running up next to the house next door and making those two buildings. Plus, you could argue that relief would still be necessary because I believe, if I remember, the whole building is pretty much in the front yard setback area anyway. Yeah, right. Um, so um, I, I think there is a hardship just based on the location of the house. That's you know, going a lot. Um, where it is on the lot. I, I don't have a problem with it myself. Entertain a motion. Before you vote, would you, um, is the board inclined to modify the two variances rather than grant new ones? Sense, right? I believe so, yes. Um, at least we're granting 20. 2015 was those variances. They were 2023. It was last August. Yeah, you know, I, I remember this too well for it to be a 2015. <laughs> 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 On the petition of Isabel. Uh, Thomas, um, seeking modification of variances granted in 2023 at 44 Lennox Street. I would move the modification of the variances to allow the petitioner to add an addition to her existing single family home. Oh. Yes, that's, that's, a a new, that's a new variance. Yeah. yeah. I would also move approval of variance for lot coverage at 44. Leonard Street. And I would second uh, the two modifications and the new lot coverage variance. Motion made and seconded. We'll have a roll call vote. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Canavo? Yes, for all. Mr. Nyman? Yes, for all. Ms. Schlichty? Yes, for uh, modification and the variance. Mr. Parisi? Also vote yes. Clearly dis displayed the hardship. Are the decisions favorable? I'd be happy to draft the decision. Appreciate Thank it. you. Okay, the next hearing is the petition of Peter and Grace Scola seeking variance 1.7, 3.2.1 1 for front and side yard setbacks and lot coverage to construct an addition at 70 and 72 rear Harrison Avenue. Mm -hmm. Before he gets, just one second, sir, just before you get started. So we, you and I were discussing the variances that are needed front and side. Is that what you read? So that's the advertisement. But as I studied this, I think it needs a rear yard setback. Rear variance. Rear yard variance and for no the setback. Left. A special permit to alter and expand a pre-existing yes. non-conforming yes. structure and no on left. a non-conforming lot. Right. And a... It's listed as a front yard setback, but I don't see it. But any sense? And uh, a special permit to convert to a two family. Yeah. Yeah, one to two with exterior change. With the exterior changes. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be, you're, we're trying to correct what you're applying for. That's all. Thank you, sir. So you'd be applying for two special permits, alternate expand. Uh, convert one to two, rear yard variance. And I don't see anything else because the left side is where the alternate expand comes Yeah, the, the, the uh, carport is already there. So you're just extending an existing nonconformity on the left-hand side. So that would take care of it with the special permit. Well, go ahead. You okay. can tell us okay. about your project. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, so what we're looking for for, for this variance is basically um, to put on a small addition to uh, accommodate uh, Grace's parents who are aging and her mother is suffering from dementia and we wanna to try to bring them into the house so we can better take care of them. Um, uh, we're both lifelong le residents of Gloucester. I've been employed with the fishery service and with Varian. Grace has been our school teacher in the system for 30 years. Um, you know, we're not looking that we're gonna try to, you know, sell this house or anything like that. We're gonna, basically stay here the rest of our lives and, um, you know, appreciate your consideration and 
if uh, there's something we need to do, um, please let me know. Did you reach out to the neighbors? Yes, all our neighbors are very supportive of this. In fact, uh, Jay McNiff uh, sent me a message on my way over here, basically wishing me good luck. Questions of the applicant at this moment? Okay. You can you can sit down. We're going to have testimony. Second, sir. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application, please come forward. Or as I said, if you're on Zoom, raise your hand. Hit your raise hand button. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? None. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Any opposition? Seeing nobody, no need for rebuttal. Discussion? Yeah, so I just have a question. I'm just looking at the table. So they have they have a left side, which we don't think they need. Uh, uh, it's so already pre- so there's it's no already... rear table, that's all. So how much of a variance is needed in the rear? So it was, uh, I got it on my chart here. Yeah, I filled in the chart, which I wish everyone would do. So the rear yard is 20, is required. <clears throat> And it's going to 18, so it's a small. 18.5. So it's a two and a half foot. One and a half. Yes. Yeah, one yeah, and a half foot. Granted, two feet. Variance. It's de minimis for the That's rear yard. Yep. So 1.5. And like I say, it's it's 6,400 square feet. It needs 10, so it's pre-existing non-conforming lot. It's a non-conforming structure because it's within the side yard setback. And so that's the alternate expand. <clears throat> and the front is 20, and I thought I saw 21. I mean, it's heck, it's uh, dashed out the setback, and we're within it. So It's behind the, the 20 setback, setback line, yeah. yeah. So I don't see the need for a front yard variant. No need for front. Okay, anyone? Front yard Did I already ask if anyone okay. speaking against? Yeah, no. Okay, so Sorry. any more? Or are we ready? Did you have questions? Yeah. No. Yes. Also, just right. The lot co lot coverage yeah. is correct. The lot coverage is right. It requires thirty. It's it's. Um, Oh, proposed thirty-five point no, yeah, five, so it's going to be five point five percent variance lot for... coverage variance. Thank you. Sorry, this needs to get right to left. So the rear and the one to two special, right. and the alternate expand. Okay. On the the people that they think on the um, petition of Peter and Grace Scola, uh seeking variance for a rear yard setback, a variance for lot coverage, a special permit to alter, expand a non-conforming structure due to the left side non-conformity. And a special permit to convert from a one to a two family. Exterior changes. With exterior changes. I would move approval of all the relief requested. I, I think that the application meets the um, requirements. I, I think that location of the, you know, existing structure itself limits where they could um, put the addition for the second unit. I, I believe that the um, I think, believe when you look at the six factors for converting from a one to a two, um, you know, it meets the need of another unit in the community. I don't think it's going to create any adverse traffic problem. You have ample parking on the property. Um, you have ample utilities to build what you're building. So I think that you um, meet the requirement for a conversion from a one to a two. And I think the lot coverage variance, you know, the hardship is really just, you have a small lot, 
you know, for, for the area. So there's only so much you can do with it. For those reasons, I'd move approval of the relief requested. Second. Motion made and seconded on two special permits and two variances. Roll call vote. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Nyman? Uh, yes, and I would cite no neighborhood opposition to any of this. Mr. Canavo? Yes. Ms. Schlichte? Yes, for all the relief requested. Mr. Parisi? I also vote yes. You've heard our decisions favorable. I'll write the decision, and we will get that out as soon as humanly possible. Thank you. Okay, our next hearing is the petition of Jay and Jennifer Albert seeking a special permit 4.1.2 and 5.24.6 to reduce the number of required off-street parking and variances under 1.7 and 3.2.1 for rear yard setback to construct an attached accessory dwelling unit at Ford Davis Street Extension. Attorney Ellis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Deborah Ellison, Ellison Law Office, 63 Middle Street, Gloucester. Um, the applicant tonight is Stacy Amaro. She is the niece of the owners, Jay and Jennifer Albert. And Christopher Legier of Lightwell Design is also here tonight to answer any technical questions you might have. The applicant seeking to construct an addition to the rear of the existing house to add an attached ADU. And if I may share my screen. This is the existing house. The relief that is being requested is a variance of 9.9 .9 feet from the rear yard setback under GZO 3.2 pursuant to 1.72 and a special permit under GZO 5.24.3C and 5.246A to reduce the number of off-street parking spaces from three to two. The um, little bit of background, the Ms. Amaro currently cares for her elderly aunt and uncle and is frequently required to stay at their home for extended periods of time. The ADU addition will allow her to live at the home, but at the same time have her own space and living quarters. This is exactly the situation that the ADU ordinance was designed for, and it will allow her aunt and uncle to remain in their home while they have a caretaker nearby. This, this is the site plan. The home is presently a conforming home on a non-conforming lot. The lot is very small at 4,980 square feet, it's in the R10 district, which requires 10,000 square feet. It's currently non-compliant and will remain non-compliant. The front and side yards are compliant and will remain compliant. The, um, there will be 2,000 square foot feet per dwelling unit, and that will also be compliant. And the lot coverage will be 18.7%. And here, 30% is allowed, so it, it meets that requirement um, handily. The ADU height will be 14 feet, nine inches, generally not visible from the street. You see it's going to be completely behind the existing structure. The height of the existing home with the is currently 26 feet, two inches, and the overall height won't change with the addition of the ADU. There are currently two parking spaces in front and the applicant is required under the GZO to have three. So they were requesting that um, there be a reduction, uh, special permit granted to have only two parking spaces. The ADU, which is shown in the back here, will have a combined kitchen and living area, and it will have one bedroom and one bath. You can see it is lower than the existing home and its profile will be essentially hidden by the front of the house um, once it's constructed. There is a separate entrance off the side and from the street, this will appear as a single family home. The applicant has spoken to all of her surrounding neighbors 
and hear any of the lots that have a number on them, she has spoken to them and they are all in favor of this application. We are not aware of any objections. The, I would argue that the variances should be granted because of the substantial hardship due to the unique characteristics of the property. It will not also substantially undercut the purposes of the GCO. The lot's unique in that it's very long and very narrow. The house um, location is at the very back and the side yards are not wide enough to accommodate in AD, an addition without also requiring variances. And that would bring them closer to the neighboring homes, whereas this addition is not as close to the neighboring properties. The front and side yards are the main open space on this lot. And so adding a parking spot into that small front yard actually takes away some of the um, open space that the applicants can use on the property. The placing it in the front of the house obviously would not be very practical, but it also would completely change the look of the house. And under the ADU um, ordinance, it states that the ADU should be designed to maintain the appearance of a single family home. So the best place to do that is putting it in the rear. And the location allows for compliance with all other dimensions except for the rear. And as I said, there are two parking spaces and we are requesting that they be reduced to uh, three parking spaces are required. We're asking that we only allowed to have or required to have two. There's ample on street parking. And so we don't believe that that will be a detriment to the neighborhood. And for all these reasons, we would ask that you grant the applicant's request. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Shed staying? Pardon? The shed is a staying? Yes. Uh, no, that is leaving. Removed. The shed is being removed. Sure. If you want to keep it? We can include it and make it move in the cornwall. When I, you don't get rid of it just because you think we won't like it. I do have another question about the parking. What's, what's the argument about not having the parking? This is the, let me go back to the front. You can see that the front yard is completely fenced. So it is fenced across by the street also. And this is really their only open space. And so they use this as their yard and outside area. So take adding another parking space in there will take away a significant portion of that lot. Um, and there is ample parking on the street. My only question was, so obviously there's been some new things being passed at the state level that are gonna allow these ADUs not to be owner occupied and parking, providing enough parking has been a hot button people um, whether or not they use it I don't know why they wouldn't just say they were going to have a third parking space do that yeah I'm a little concerned about not putting the parking on the lot I mean that's going to be a playground down there there's going to be a lot of traffic hopefully down there I mean soccer games soccer fields whatever and there really is there is room to put a parking spot in there I mean I I have no problem with ADU I think it looks nice I, I think it you know, meets a need for another housing unit, but I, I would like to see the parking on the, on the property. May I consult with my client? Yeah. I don't have a problem with your fence trees. I didn't have it. To say what that it was owner occupied ADU? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we can. Um. Sorry. Uh, if it is the board's desire to have that parking space, um, my client will agree to remove that request. I would point out that the ADU is only 297 square feet and the existing house is 1,264 square feet. So it's not a situation where you're going to have millions of people living in that house. Um, and all the neighbors did, all the surrounding neighbors did approve it. 
So my clients would certainly like to have that request granted, but if the board is inclined not to do that there, they will withdraw it. Any thought? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to take part in that. Okay. <coughs> um, otherwise, I'm fine with anything. What's that? Let's take some testimony first from the public. Huh? Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application? Anyone in favor? Come forward or raise your hand on the device. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the request? Any opposition? Seeing none. Both are shared. Okay, so we are going to condition, well, we're gonna have a motion first. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I could just mention, if you are, um, we would like the opportunity to withdraw the request for parking if it's not going to be allowed rather than have it be denied. Okay. Well, we were, if we were gonna approve the application with the condition that a plan be submitted showing the three spots. That's the best way. That way you only have to turn in a drawing. Because right. we'll need it documented. Okay, so we are going to, well, we're going to have a motion and it would be to variance, right? Rear yard. So the rear yard variance and with the condition that the parking would be located uh, the third spot would be located in the front lot yep. that a plan be submitted showing the three parking spaces and, no and that the um, shed be allowed to stay is it too close or do we need to move it i mean i realistically they should I feel like it's in the, the addition yeah they can just it would be too close to the addition. It would have to be moved. If they want to keep it, we can grant variances, they can come include back. variances for the shed to stay and to be moved to the corner of the lot. Certainly, we would like that. Yeah. I hate to lose a good shed. <laughs> All right, we need a motion. I'll try to make a motion. <laughs> Correct way, what I mess up. Uh, position of Jay and Jennifer Albert. Uh, seeking variance 1.7, 3.1, career yard setback, um, variances to move the shed to the rear right corner, right corner, uh, and with a condition that the uh, that we would receive a draw showing the showing the third. Mm -hmm parking spot um, adjacent to the two that exist. So I would move approval of all of that. And I think there is a hardship. Uh, it's a long, narrow lot. Houses um, set way back compared to most of the houses around there. Only place to really add on to that house is at the rear uh, of the lot. Um, so I think they've established a hardship and I would move approval as I've spoken. Like to second that for all relief motion, for question. Okay, motion made and seconded as stated. We'll have a roll call vote. Ms. Lichty? Uh, yes, for all the relief requested and the condition. Mr. Canavo? Simple yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Nyman? Yes. Mr. Parisi? Yes. 
We've heard our decisions favorable, uh, along with the draft decision, if we could get a new site plan showing the three parking spaces with that, and then that'll then get signed. Thank you. Okay, our next application, last of the evening, is the petition of Martha Levin, seeking to modify an existing special permit on the 1.5.13 1.9.3, and a special permit under 2.4.5 to modify an existing permit to demolish and a non-conforming structure and rebuild the same at 50 Traverse Street. Attorney Ellison again. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Deborah Ellison, Ellison Law Office, 63 Middle Street, Gloucester. The owner and applicant, Martha Levin, is here tonight, along with Peter Hornbeck. And the designer from Pouring Company is Jonathan Poor. He's also here tonight. And if he could be promoted as a panelist, he will be explaining um, the structural issues to you as well as the design changes. The builder is Andy Stevens Company, and the property is located at 15 Traverse Street. The applicant is seeking a modification under 1.5.13 of the special permit plan. Um, which was approved on January 12, 2023, and a modification under GZO 1.9.3 to modify the special permit to include a written determination under GZO 2.4.5, allowing the entire structure to be demolished and rebuilt. An approved plan and a special permit may be modified for good cause and provided the modification does not repair, impair the interests of the city or the neighborhood. The applicant was before this board in January 2023, seeking to alter an existing non-conforming structure on a non-conforming lot by adding dormers to the second floor and some other minor alterations, exterior alterations. The approved project also included renovations to an existing shed on the property, but there are no modifications being sought to that part of the approval. After the building permit was issued and the work began, the project, it was determined that there were certain structural deficiencies in the existing home that did not make it practical or expedient to just rehabilitate the building as they had originally planned to do. Initially, the building inspector gave them permission to tear down some of the building to address some of these deficiencies, but when it became clear that the entire building needed to come down, a modification was required. The footprint of the building will remain the same, but some of the approved improvements to the property will not be done, making this a more limited um, project. And now I will turn it over to Mr. Poor to give you some details. Jonathan Poor, Poor and Company, 315 Washington Street, Gloucester. I'm uh, just going to share my screen. So uh, this is a just a uh, existing conditions photo of, of what we started with with the house um, as it uh, was before the commencement of construction. As Attorney Ellison mentioned, a number of, of uh, concealed Construction deficiencies were, were uh, found as we did the interior demolition, and I'll just go quickly go through them. Uh, as is normal with, a, with a, some of these smaller Cape Ann houses, it was understructured, but in addition to that, over the years, there were some uh, improper modifications and structural changes made to the house that really uh, were fairly extensive. So. Uh, you can see from these images here, there's very wide uh, framing spacing. There's a lot of discontinu discontinuous framing studs that go nowhere, no headers ab above any windows in the entire property, um, no ridge beam. Uh, there was a king post under the, the main uh, ridge area. It's literally cut off and missing the bottom half. It's missing the... Uh, um, there's dormers that are completely unsupported, framing that goes nowhere. A lot of notched and cracked beams and improper framing. 
And these are just typical conditions that are found throughout. I'm not showing exhaustively what the conditions are, but literally every window was missing headers. You can see on the, on the left image here, no header above the window, discontinuous, discontinuous, discontinuous studs. And there was extensive foundation settlement. You can see this is a shift in the front wall uh, foundation and extensive rotted sills. So um, in summary, while it is physically possible to renovate this building, it would essentially require duplicating, re basically replacing every wood member in every construction assembly within the floors, walls, and roof. If left in their current location and configuration, the result would mean that the original wood members are no longer serving a structural function. It would also mean that the new structure surrounding these elements would be of inferior construction quality because the existing assemblies would literally interfere with the, the proper construction techniques. This approach of leaving the existing construction deficiencies in place would also dramatically compromise energy efficiency as the cavities that would normally be filled with insulation would instead, instead be filled with failed construction assemblies. So um, therefore, looking at best practice from a code, construction integrity, speed of construction, cost of construction point of view, the best approach is to remove the existing wood structure in its entirety and uh, build a new structure in its exact location. So that is what basically the essence of what we're asking here. And then in addition, while we're doing that, we're also requesting that there's a, there was a dormer that we got previously got permission for on, on this side of the uh, property. We don't intend to build that, same with the smaller dormer behind it. Uh, and there was a, a porch running across the entire building. It was really dysfunctional. You couldn't even get to this portion of the porch. So we're pr proposing to remove that. And then we're proposing to add a bulkhead for access to the basement that's completely within the setback requirements. And then the only addition we're asking for is this small area next to the, um, to the existing bay. It, it uh, allows us to make a code compliance stair inside the building because the, the building is very tight in footprint. And just adding this little bit of foot, footprint within the existing porch, no, no bigger than the existing footprint of the building, just allows us to, to create a code compliance stair, which is very important for this client because they would really like to age in place and this and have a safe stair. Currently the stair is not very safe and certainly not code compliant. So these are the elevations. And again, they just repeat the same information that I just mentioned, removal of the side dormer, which is this yellow area, a little bit of ex extension around the, um, the front bay. And so again, this is a reminder of what the building originally looked like. On the left here is what was previously permitted in front of this board. And then we, again, intend to remove this dormer um, and bring it back to the original second floor footprint, which you can see on the left, and then reduce the, the, uh, the footprint of the porch out in front. So that's a quick summary of what we're proposing. I'd be happy to entertain any questions if, if uh, the board has them. I think so, 100 years old and it didn't fall down. Good turn. Yeah. Okay. No other questions by the board at this time. We'll all go to public testimony. Is there anyone in the audience wish to speak in favor of the application or online? Please come forward or raise your hand. Anyone in favor? Hi. Right, so uh, my name is Michael Sennett and. I have to own the property at uh, 17 Traverse Street, which is the immediate abutment. Are you speaking in favor? Yes. Okay. Yeah, if you can just talk directly into the mic because they can't hear it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. My, my voice is a little weak. Uh, but uh, actually, what I, really, I really wanted to just ask a question, a couple of questions. Uh, and that is, and I think I understand from the presentation that was just given that the original exterior proportions of the building before any of this started are going to be restored in the final uh, proposed building. Is, is it, if you have other questions, we'll have them respond to everything. At once. Okay, so, uh, that, so 
my understanding that the uh, original structure of the building before any modifications will be will be restored, and um, the other question I have is about the uh, condition of the uh, terrain, the, the lot where the previous structure had been removed. There's been some destabilization of the soil on that on that side of the uh, property, and it's starting to erode away. And I wonder if there's any plan to address that. And uh, the third question is if there is a, a timeline for you know, final construction, because this has been sitting as a uh, you know, partly torn down structure and a hole in the ground for almost a year now. But I am heartily in favor of the reconstruction of the, of the building uh, to modern standards. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Any opposition? Seeing none, we will ask Attorney Ellison back up or Mr. Poor to answer the questions raised. I didn't write the questions down, but let me see if I can do them from memory and then prompt me if I miss something. Uh, so the first thing is, was, is the building being restored to its original footprint? The answer is on the second floor, uh, the second floor was a simple gable volume, and we were originally asking for a, uh, a cross gable, which increased the size of the second floor. So the answer is the second floor is reverting back to its original footprint. Um, and then everything else on the first floor is as previously requested, which had minor a minor bay in the back and, and removal of some encroachments on the neighbor's property. So I think that was the answer to the first question. And then the second question was um, erosion. erosion, yes. So, and, and also time, time, timeline. Uh, so I'm not exactly familiar with where the erosion uh, issue is, but uh, we will certainly take a look at that and make sure that there's there's no destabilization. Uh, there's been a site work contractor and, a, and the general contractor monitoring this uh, all the way through. And the challenge has been because it's a tight site and because we've had to do so much demolition that we didn't anticipate, it's just made it challenging. And the reason we're here tonight is to make this go faster. And so that's the answer to the next question is uh, we, we feel this will move right along if we can get the, the deficient building out of the way and have room to work correctly. Uh, so that's, that's really the major ask here. So uh, was there another question that I didn't answer? Just the timeline, yeah. Timeline, yeah. So uh, the, I, the, the mission is to, is to complete this project as quickly as possible. It is so unfortunate that this um, applicant, these owners have had uh, so many challenges here uh, with the structure and it's just really slowed the process down and we feel that if we can have the permission granted to remove the rest of the structure, this will speed things right up. Any other questions? Great, thank you. Oh, he has one more question, you allow that? So it goes back to the, the first issue is, if this motion is approved, Will a new building permit be drawn that will lock in the design features? Yeah, this is gonna be a modification to previously granted. Right. And it'll be a uh, decision written, it'll be signed and stamped and the whole bit and start over. Thank you. Okay. Anybody have any questions, discussion? Are we ready? Uh, I think there's certainly good cause shown for modification of the permits. Um, I'll make a motion. Unless you want to make it? You think so, huh? 
on the petition of Moth 11, seeking to modify um, an existing special permit 1.5.13, 1.9.3, and special permit 2.5, uh, to allow for uh, demolition and reconstruction of the uh, structure at 15 Travis Street, um, as shown in the plans, I would move approval of the modifications as requested. Second. Motion made and seconded. We have a roll call vote. Ms. Schlichty? Yes. Mr. Nyman? Yes. Mr. Canavo? Yes, I think it's a good project. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Parisi? Yes. We've heard our decisions favorable. Get a draft decision. We'll get it processed, hopefully. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Uh, okay, so for the board members, uh, my next meeting, I understand, is going back to the senior center for some reason? Yes. Yes, city council bumped us. So oh, they, they need their own. Oh, they're having their meeting for, on 3A. They're yeah. having their vote on 3A. So we'll be there for one more meeting. They think we'll this is their headquarters? Yeah. All right, so well, next Mr. meeting, the will... 29th, which um, who's knocking? The two people aren't going to be I here. I will not be here. Ron, are you here or away? Next meeting is 26. 26, You are here? You are okay. here, yeah. All right, so we'll, that'll be back at the senior center, and then we come back here after that. Um, I'm hoping, I uh, had some discussions with the city solicitor, and I'm hoping that by the next meeting, if we can get it done on time, we're going to suggest a few modifications to our procedures, which we haven't done in several years. I remember the last time was, I don't know, 18. So we're going to just change a couple of things. And one of the ones we have in difficult, we're hoping to propose to you folks to change is the ability for us at the following meeting to vote that we accept the decisions as written and allow just the chairman to sign them because we're taking too long to chase yep. people down, especially with the ability to be remote. Um, this will, uh, we still review them. They'll be sent out to us. Yep. You all take a look at them, but probably the first order of business besides the minutes will be the, uh, the, Acceptance of the written decisions, oh, okay. and then I'll sign. I'll okay. sign them. Somebody will sign. Them. Yeah. So I'm working on that, and I, if anyone gets a chance to look at the order, the procedures that we've adopted, and won't think anything else might be changed. I've written a few notes um, of stuff that so they're in here. Yeah, they're in. Yeah. No, they're in. Well, they're online. I haven't keep them in this book, but it's the city uh, ordinances. Yeah. It's okay. this, um, and we, yeah, we adopted it on uh, 2018. Okay. It's these rules of procedure for the zoning board. So if okay. there's anything else in here you think might be, make sense to change, these are our guidelines so we can change them. Okay. Um, take a look. We'll get that done. Other than that, anybody have any other issues or problems or questions? I can tell you, uh, you did get a, I think everybody got the email with the copies of the floodplain issues. Yeah. Um, so there, there's one more piece of that that they're working on um, because there's been a lot of confusion about the process is gonna be. So I talked with Suzanne today and they're, they're working on that other step that was missing. So it'll be clearer for the public and for us to understand. But in the meantime, you can, if you get a chance to look through that ordinance, um, it's the only thing I mentioned was if it ever if it does get to us eventually, asking us to allow any kind of building in that zone, it's a it's a different standard of variance. You just oh. we'll have to learn to be familiar with that. Okay. It's no longer just showing a hardship. It would it has many more criteria because this is state and federal. With oh, yeah, I didn't think we could vary that. Okay, we can. We are allowed. Variances. Um, but it's a whole different set of cause. It's in our ordinance now. It was adopted. Yeah. It's just the implementation of it's been a little bit of a struggle out of the gate. Yeah. Because people didn't have clear. Okay. It's well written. It's pretty um, pretty straightforward to read through it. Um, I think there's some subtleties that I need to be advised on, but in the general structure, I think it's 
it's it's a good it's a good read. Yeah, there's another piece coming to it of a permit that would be granted that wasn't made as part of it. So they're working on how to spell that out. So it, it clarifies for everybody where you go, the order, and when it comes back to us. So there's a couple in there applied, but they're not ready yet. So any, I remember when we had uh, some of those petitions with people coming before us and modify that demo permit. Is there anything to that that would make it cleaner? Or is it just the way? When they tore it down first and yeah. then came back? Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I, I'd almost, you'd almost want to say to people when we're looking at it, saying, you know, are you sure you don't want to tear this down? Because us going from, uh, what is it, 2.4.5 to 2.4.6 right, or I'm whatever saying, it like, is, could we is would not, it, would it be under just one ordinance demolition kind of says, hey, whether you're demoing a wall or demoing the whole house, or does it just have to keep it as separate? It's regular demolition permit is right. is Rob's area, but if they want to uh, tear down and rebuild an entire home, that comes to us. What's happening is they're not asking for that up front, and then they're finding out they want to tear it down. Like here, yeah, they just think they're going to alter a non-conforming structure and then they get into it and it's like I, I really need to take the whole building down sometimes until you put me until you pull it you got it you don't know but even still or, that house was 100 years old and never fell down we're getting a little crazy with the building code and uh you know there were jack studs that went all the way up so there's no header it didn't need a header there's no load you know um but i understand but that was a good legitimate reason to make a new home. We want homes more energy efficient. We want them structurally sound. So we always we support those. We always support those things, yes. you know. All right. Anything else? We'll have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Ms. Lichty? Yes. Mr. Nyman? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Canava? Yes. Mr. Prese? Yes, we are adjourned. Packets, for the next Packets don't forget. There. If you